this is for Charles. Do you believe the city's overstaffed? This is kind of a question that's been uh, running through the entire uh, debate here. But uh, uh, if so, where would you recommend that personnel cuts be made? Well, and that's one that we hear a lot. Uh, certainly, as uh, again, as I'm crisscrossing the city, talking to folks, you know, they're, they're, they're always talking about too much fat at City Hall. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, and I, as I said, I brought this uh, this document with me that indicates the positions that have been cut since 2003. And looking at the departments, uh, just about every department, certainly at City Hall, has been cut. There's one thing that folks need to understand is that a lot of the services that are provided by the city are mandated. They're services that we have to provide. Uh, you know, the assessor's office, the uh, engineering department, uh, the city clerk's office has functions that they have to perform. Uh, you, we have an information systems department. Uh, uh, obviously, it takes a lot of folks to run a, a city of this size. All of those departments have taken hits of one or two employees that have been reduced. Now, that being said, the original question is, do you believe the city is overstaffed? Certainly, as I said previously, we can always look for cost efficiencies. Um, and I, it's something that uh, I think the, we need to uh, uh, require the city manager to do, because that's his function, is to take a, a, a very hard look at the organization. We haven't done that recently. When Mr. Bellman first got uh, uh, first got the full-time position, was uh, hired for the position of city manager, he did a restructuring. And it was based on the staff at that time. Now, I've said a couple times now, we've downsized quite a number of employees. And so I think it's something that really needs to be looked at seriously as far as the staffing. Um, in what uh, departments would I recommend that personnel cuts be made? Um, I, I, all of them. I mean, I think we can look for efficiencies. Obviously, uh, we reach the point where we can't provide the services uh, that we need to provide if uh, we don't have them staffed properly. Uh, but certainly, I think it's something that uh, we need to take a very serious look at. Now, one of the issues that, uh, and this deals with uh, um, downsizing the city, that, uh, and this is where my opponent and I uh, disagree, is the downsizing of the uh, police department and the fire department. And he brought that up and said, I think it's germane because we're talking about being overstaffed. Uh, yes, our fire department is, uh, uh, there's quite a number of uh, uh, fire suppression uh, and uh, their command is rather limited, but uh, if we lose any firefighters at all, we close a fire station. And as I said earlier, uh, police and fire are the number one issue, as, uh, as indicated by a survey that I gave, and a non-scientific, and uh, as I said also, I would share that information with you at some point, because that could be a topic in itself. Um, can we still downsize and uh, reduce uh, fire personnel? Uh, also, the city manager is looking into the possibility of doing that. Can we run four stations and still downsize? I think we can and we can save some money in that particular area. As far as the police department goes, uh, which is also a major portion of the general fund budget, uh, I believe we're at absolute minimums in the uh, police department. Uh, you know, we, we have some, uh, some drug problems in the city. Our, our Viper uh, squad, I think, does a good job of, tr of curtailing that. Uh, I've heard stories about the fact that Saginaw is eight miles away and we're being infiltrated as they become tougher on crime in their city. It's an issue that we have to deal with because folks are coming over here. Um, so can we can we reorganize and look for more efficiencies? Certainly, and I think we should always do that. Okay. Final question, guys. Uh, as you know, the state uh, has a uh, tax increase proposal uh, on the uh, on the agenda. And it's, uh, it's quite controversial. Uh, the governor says this will cost the uh, average family of four that makes $50,000, $50,000 income, a dollar a person a week, or 200 bucks. Uh, this involves the city because of the revenue sharing. It's a key to that. Where do you stand on the state tax increase that's been proposed to keep the state budget afloat and keep the state from closing down? Well, I don't know a lot about it. I know that you know. I know that uh, certainly the um, state government debated uh, right until the very end as far as you know. Uh, should they make more cuts? Uh, should they uh, um, should they uh, 
increase taxes. And I, I, it's another area where I think we're starting to see the effects of uh, uh, government and it, it, it takes money to, to provide services. And it's not only us, it's the, uh, it's the colleges and universities, uh, it's uh, the county programs that reach out to, uh, to other individuals. Uh, it, it, it's a very, it was a very tough decision for them to make. And I believe that the state has cut and cut and cut and cut, and you get to the point where, all right, what are we going to cut? And if we lose, I don't know the exact figure for our revenue sharing, if we lose a portion of that, then we'll have to go back to the table and we would have to make the cuts. I mean, there's no question about it. As I said earlier, um, we only take so much in and and that's it, and that's the bottom line. So uh, I, I do support uh, the decisions that were made at the state level.